I'm impressed with this guy. If you would have told me 15 years ago that you could get this type of bass from something this small, something that has this much power, I don't know if I would have believed you, but after hearing it, I'm a believer. Today we're gonna be mostly talking about the Kef KC62, but I do have to compare it to this SVS 3000 Micro, just because they came out around the same time, and they're both very tiny subwoofers. So if you haven't watched my unboxing video, I did a little bit of a physical comparison between these two, but if you haven't, just basically, you can see the size difference, and you would think that this one is larger, so it would be heavier. Okay, all right, so there's the SVS 3000 Micro, and I'm not exaggerating here. This is, it's like a bowling ball, scary heavy. That's because this one's made out of aluminum, this one's made out of wood. As far as the build quality and the look, I'm gonna have to give that to the Kef, although this is nearly twice as expensive as this, so is it worth it? We're gonna have to find out. So looking on the back here, you'll see the plate amp on both of these, and they look pretty different because this one has dials and switches, whereas the SVS is mostly just buttons and a lot of the stuff that you can do using the SVS app. Now this one, they do have an app for it, but you know, I tried to look for one specifically for this, but I think that you have to have a CAF LS50 in order to use that app with this. I think that the actual uh, speaker controls this. I might be wrong. I haven't had that much time to play with this before I send it back. That's one thing I really couldn't find. I did search their manual and I didn't see that there was a specific app just for the sub, whereas this SVS has its own proprietary software just for the sub itself. I kind of feel like these were built to be paired with the LS50s and other KEF powered speakers because although you can use it with others, if the app requires that KEF LS50, then you know, you're not really doing a lot of the stuff here. Although you can use it, I really think that they designed it for their own KEF stuff. Now I may be wrong, like I'm saying, I tried to look for the app, I couldn't find it, so Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. The Kef does have a zero to 180 degree phase shift. It has a few different EQ modes, which we'll get into in a bit. And a switch for a manual control of the crossover or LFE, which means that it's gonna pass anything from 120 Hertz down. For most AVRs that have that, you just use LFE. Crossover can be adjusted manually as well as the volume. Now, the one thing that I wanna make sure to point out that I really like about this is that this has a high pass filter, meaning you can choose to connect some external speakers, external powered speakers, or even an amplifier connected to some passive speakers, and you can actually use this as a high pass, meaning that this will receive all the frequencies below a certain frequency, and it'll pass on the frequencies above that, smoother response, smoother crossover. So that's what you want. You want the subwoofer to take care of the lower frequencies, and the other speakers to play all the frequencies above that. You don't really want them doing the same frequencies at the same time, because then you get a bump in the frequency response. This one cannot do that by itself. It does have a low pass, meaning it won't receive certain frequencies above where you set it, but what it can't do is it can't pass the higher frequencies onto an external speaker, you're gonna need an AVR or an amplifier that has that built in. What does that mean? If you're a home theater enthusiast, your AVR probably can already do that, so not a big deal. But if you're into two channel, a lot of those don't have that capability. This does, and that's what I think is very cool. I think that these are really targeted towards a two channel listener that may not have that stuff built in. One of the reasons why a lot of the two channel guys weren't into subs because there wasn't a good way to integrate it yeah, Kef, you guys are doing the right thing. One thing you'll notice about these force canceling drivers, which are actually two drivers that are connected in the middle where the magnet is, what you'll notice is the cabinet just doesn't move. Same thing with this one with the dual opposing drivers, you kind of get the same effect. Also, both of them do have inverted surrounds, although this has a crazy design to it, and I think that's to help control it when it's at max excursion. The main spec that everybody was talking about was that this is supposed to hit down to 11 hertz, with dual six and a half inch and supposed to hit 105 decibels. What we found out and what I suspected was that it can't do both 105 decibels and 11 hertz. I just found it misleading because it kind of sounded like it could do 11 hertz at 105 decibels, which is not the case. It's using something called dynamic EQ, which adjusts the bass response based on the volume. So what I found out from my testing is that it can hit 105 decibels, but that's around the 70 hertz range 
not 11. What I want to do is I want to see what their claim is of 11 hertz, if that's true. And their other claim of 105 decibels. So let's find out. All right, so time to run some measurements and see how this performs in REW. All right, so right now what we're doing is I'm doing some compression testing to see when it starts limiting the output of this to save the drivers on this. Right now I'm doing some testing to see what those different switches and different options are on the back and how it affects the frequency response. One thing I found interesting was that the switch for room actually gives you the most basic extension, so something to note. All right, so I just got done doing some of the uh, dynamic EQ tests, and you can definitely see that as you turn up the volume that the EQ, the frequency response, starts to change. It starts to give you a little bit less bass extension. So I'm gonna have to go and see exactly where we're at at 85 decibels from two meters. So I'm gonna have to do some corrections to kind of give an idea of where we're at so I can compare it with other subwoofers. All right, so just to be fair, I'm going to be testing out the SVS 3000 micro in the same condition, same spot, same microphone, same everything. So we should have a fair test here to see how they perform against one another. All right, so right now I am taking a look at both of the measurements and I'm actually pretty surprised with what I'm seeing here. Um, it's not what I expected and I'm glad that Kef, that you guys sent this out to me for review because this gives me a better idea of what's going on and it's actually better than I expected. So this is a measurement from two meters away. You can see that there's a dip, but this is caused by my room, but you can see this one here is the SVS, right? The one that's lighting up in green. There's a little bit more output here for, well, there's a lot more output here for the SVS, but as far as low frequency extension, as far as how far it goes out, you can see here that the, uh, the KEF actually has more extension here, right? Below 20 Hertz at max volume. So let's take a look at the max corrected response. Now, one difference is that the SVS does not change as you go up in volume. So this is the max volume of the SVS, 3000 micro, and you can see the response there. And this is the maximum response of the KEF. And so what do we see here? You can see that the 3000 micro stays much flatter at max volume. You can see the other one has a peak, the KEF has a peak in purple. So it has a peak and then it goes down, but you also see that it still extends out further below 20 Hertz at the max volume. So if you were to just cut it off right here, cut that off using DSP, then uh, you're actually getting more output with the KEF because the SVS starts dropping off sooner. Now, how much that really matters in the real world, it's hard to tell because, you know, this is not really great volumes, 90 decibels. Uh, I mean, you'll be able to hear that, but it's not really what you want as far as, you know, for a movie situation. But for music, I think this is gonna be good enough. So it's still what I expected, meaning that the SVS does have more output, right? You see that it does have more output at max, at when it's at max volume. Um, it has more low frequency extension up until 23 Hertz where the SVS falls off. And the KEF, even though it has this huge, huge dip here, right? it still extends a little bit further. So what can you make of that? That the KEF, the dynamic EQ actually does work. It does do a good job of extending the bass frequency out. And it's a cool technology. I think that if the SVS would have done that, you would have seen that it would have had more output because it has dual eight inch drivers as opposed to dual six and a halfs. So real quick, let's just take a look here um, at the KEF at lower volume, so this one is at max volume. And then as you see, you know, minus 10 dB and minus 20 dB, they look the same because at minus 20, 20 dB is where you start uh, uh, hitting that limiter anyway. So it doesn't matter, those don't matter. What you start seeing is minus 30 dB though, then you start seeing the difference in the frequency response. You see that 
it starts to change. It starts to flatten out minus 50 dB. So at lower volumes, you see that the calf is flatter at the lowest volumes. I mean, this is this is pretty low listening, uh, but you see that you do get some bass extension. I wasn't seeing that 11 hertz, but that could have been my mic. And so uh, very interesting stuff here. Like I said, I wasn't able to use an app or find an app for this, but if there is, I'm not sure that there's a PEQ setting where you could adjust this based on how it's performing in your room. Because if you can tell through my measurements, how it performs two meters away is not the same as how it measures up close. And so even though this is relatively flat, depending on the listening volume, it might perform totally different in your listening position. And so PEQ can help with that parametric EQ. I don't know that this has that. This does. If you're a two channel listener and you just wanna add some extra bass, you don't have an AVR or a receiver that has any DSP or room correction, I would recommend something like this because then you can use the high pass that's built into these. But if you're setting up a small home theater or you have an AVR, I would recommend the SVS because at half the price, you can get two of these to one of these and put them on opposite side of the room. You're gonna get more bass, you're gonna get more even bass because you're using two versus one. Also, one thing to be very careful of is if you wanna use these for movies, the problem is that dynamic EQ, it's gonna be tough to use an external Odyssey type room EQ because what is it set to? the frequency response of this changes. So when it does its calibration, well, it's gonna be based on what volume these are set to, which is around 85 decibels. So the result is you may be EQing for a certain frequency that might not be the same frequency when you turn it up or when you turn it down. Now I was highly critical of the KEF because of the way they marketed it, 11 hertz, 105 decibels, but one thing I would say is I was pleasantly surprised, not only by the build quality, but also by the sound. I mean, I tested it here in a, in a home theater. I tested it out in my two channel living room setup. And I can say that for my listening levels, it added more than enough bass because I'm not listening really loud. When people say, you know, you need 105 decibels or hundred, you know, all these high numbers, think about it and do you really know what level you prefer to listen at? Maybe next time you're listening to music, get a decibel meter and see about how loud you're listening to the music. If it's not over 90 decibels, well, you know that these are probably gonna be pretty good for you. And that's the thing, I don't know how many people know how loud they're actually listening to speakers. The other thing to keep in mind is you do get some room gain when you put these in a corner. So even though these are not gonna get super loud, it does help if you have them placed properly. So just to give you an example, I was comparing both of these in my living room situation where I have some ELAC Unify reference speakers, some floor standards, and both of them added bass where you'd think that you may not need it. Trust me, when you add a sub, it really fills out the bottom end, actually makes the whole system sound just much better, much fuller. The speakers sound huge in comparison, even though you're not adding that much size, you're just adding these. As far as distortion goes, I feel like the limiter in the calf is a little bit better. The SVS, when I did hit the limiter, you could hear a slight bit of distortion before it backed it off, whereas the calf kind of just didn't even let it happen. I think that if you're a calf fan, if you're into two channel audio and you don't mind spending the money, you already have your mind made up anyway. You're gonna buy the Kef. If you have Kef, you want everything matching and that's fine. I think you're gonna be happy with it. But if you're like me and you're just looking for the best bang for your buck budget, then I think two SVS for the price of one of these, it's kind of hard to argue with. Okay, so just to be clear, are you getting frequencies down to 20 Hertz? Yes, you are. Is it at levels that you want? It depends on how loud you like to listen. For me, most levels that I like to listen to, I think, yeah, it gets down to 20 Hertz and uh, I'm, I would be happy with it at that volume. For movies, maybe not, maybe not because you have these explosions and you wanna get scared. I don't know that these are gonna scare you. They're not gonna shake the house, they're not gonna do all that, but you'll be able to hear the sound. Will this Kef KC62 outperform uh, SVS or Monoprice sub, Monolith sub that's four times the size, even though it's maybe half the price? No, <laughs> no, you can't beat physics. Those subs are gonna hit deeper, they're gonna play louder with more authority, 100%. But they're also pretty huge. Pretty huge in comparison to these. 
So I know other subwoofer guys have stuff that looks like refrigerators. Not everybody wants that. That's my review of the Kef KC62. If there's something I missed, leave it in the comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. Anyway, if you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Take care, bye-bye. All right, so here we are at the subwoofer leaderboard and I have the KC62. Best under 2000 because these are about 1500 bucks and that's the only one there. Now, best overall subwoofer that I've reviewed. So keep in mind, this is what I've reviewed. I'm gonna have to put them, so this is gonna be tough. I could put it above the KC, or sorry, the SVS 3000 Micro because of the build quality, uh, because of the features, the high pass, and the base extension, but the SVS has a little bit more output, usable output. Mm, I could put it here and that would be fair. I could put it under here and that would also be fair. It just it really depends. If you're looking for two channel, I'm gonna put it this way. If I'm gonna put it for a home theater, I'd rather get two SVS 3000 micros and uh, call it a day. So I'll leave it like this for now. You can switch it up if you want.